I feel like I moved down in places. Whoa, it's Heart Wise Noodle with 10,000 bits. Oh, maybe maybe I should include that in the YouTube video too. Oh man. Or maybe that will be the beginning of the next YouTube video, which is this YouTube video. I think you have made it in my time you have your own emote. <sighs> yeah, that's the the sign of of fame. Um I have I have so much future planning to do. All these YouTube videos coming up. Still waiting for a game. This is the thing about classical tournaments. Ooh, hands up. Okay. Tell me an opening to play. Queen's Gambit of 19 seconds. Some of these openings I don't know of. What's a where opening? I want to play something reasonable. Let's play... I, I was seeing a lot of E4 suggestions. Whoa, it's Tagi with 5,000 more bits. Stay out for a minute, <laughs> okay. Wait. Um, let me uh, let me try and focus here. Uh, <laughs> thanks again, Tagi. Thanks again, Heartwise and Noodle. We have a Petrov. I don't want to, like, play garbage. Someone, people were saying Halloween Gambit. But Halloween has passed. People, some people were saying Italian. Um, it's not so easy to play Italian against Petrov, but I can try. I'll play bishop c4 here. Bishop c4 is an interesting move. The idea, it's actually, we, we could have a, a reverse Stafford Gambit. Because uh, one idea is knight takes e4 and then knight c3. Uh, in which I would have the extra tempo with already have played bishop c4. Um, okay, so this will be interesting. It's slightly unexpected. Like, I don't think anyone recommended this specific line, but hopefully there will be lessons to learn. And actually, for any e4 player that doesn't know what to play against a Petrov, I can recommend bishop c4 as like a, an aggressive, kind of venomous option. Because white's temporarily down a pawn, but there is there's a lot of tricks involving... I mean, white has a lot of initiative here already. I have threat of this, I have threat of this. Black has nothing developed. So, yeah, we're, we're um, at least beginning to, to have some fun. Also, Nav Wander, thanks for the sub. And it's always a nice sign when the opponent's thinking. I will say that at a very high level, this is considered dubious for white. And this is why we didn't see this in the, the World Championship match. I'm sure uh, as Fabiano playing uh, playing the black pieces, Fabiano would have been very happy if uh, Carlson went into this line. I'm sure he's booked up. And it, it turns out F6 is the best move, uh, which is slightly concerning. Hopefully opponents isn't super booked up <laughs> okay but we're, we're still gonna have fun um like even when f6 is played um it it's still a bit awkward for black because f6 um so this diagonal is open as far as i know knight h4 is uh, the right approach and okay my, my one hope is that Opponents not booked up with like all the the computer moves, because if that's the case, then I have no chance. But the idea of knight h4 is a simple threat of queen h5. Um, another idea is to play f4 at some point, and just bust open the center with white's or with uh, black's king, uncastled. I'm not really going to castle anytime soon because I control g8. Oh no, oh, no what? My queen is safe. I don't have anything to say oh no about. Maybe oh no my pawn. But it's a little too late to be regretful. It's happening soon. What's happening soon? What's about to happen? F6? F6 already played. G6. Ooh. Yeah, G6 is the best move. Easy move to find though. Is really only move to defend against queen h5. 
And now, okay, now I'm trying to remember because I've had this position as black in bullet games. And I remember just getting just completely torn apart by various opponents. So I think it's F4 immediately. I think that makes the most sense. Because I'm never scared of G5, even though I should always be scared of G5, uh, because Queen H5 check. Daxi Poo 71, thanks for the, the sub. So F4. And very soon I want a castle. Open the F file. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I haven't heard that one. It's always Litsku. Oh my gosh. Whoa, it's Tagi with 20 gifted subs. Here we go, I guess. This, this is happening. <laughs> thanks, Tagi. And thanks... Oh. Oh, also thanks to the, the 20 new subs for existing. I could read these names off while my opponent contemplates. <laughs> my opponent just has nothing developed. I'm already attacking stuff. Okay, I think that's enough arrows to keep people entertained. New subs, SG, SG Traito. Oh, never mind. E4. Okay, E4 I don't remember being a move. Um, now, it might be a move. Now, when I say I don't remember it being a move, it's like... I, I'm referring to the, the computer evaluations. Because there was some point in time I, I was studying this with Stockfish, and I, I vaguely remember, like, D6, Queen E7... Um, but e4, I guess it makes some sense. Uh, I mean, at some point, black wants to play d5, f5, and have a pawn center and, and shut me down. Um, so there's some ideas that initially come to mind. I'll have to hold off on reading the sub names, um, but people can see when they, they pop up. Uh, one idea is queen, queen d5, I mean, probably the most forcing move. There's also ideas f5. There's also knight f5 idea. Whenever black takes, I have queen h5 check with lots of fun. The thing about knight f5, I don't think, or does it threaten something? Actually, knight f5 kind of threatens queen d5. Because it takes away queen e7, and then mate would be unstoppable. Um, but I think like knight f5 just doesn't seem right. Black could even play c6, and d5's coming. Yeah. So the most attractive move... As far as... Like, everything I've considered is, is f5. Because f5 actually has a threat. And like f5, g5, then queen h5, king e7, queen, like the king just gets dragged into the open, and maybe I can orchestrate some castling with queenside checkmate stuff. Um, like f5, what does black do to defend? Does this pawn's hit? There's no rook g8, I'm controlling g8. I'm just threatening to take twice. D, I guess d5 is a move. But f5, d5, I take. If bishop takes, I take, and again, queen h5. Let's play f5. Also open up the bishop. So there's, I mean, main issues for black are tactical, but this is also kind of positional to accelerate my, my development further. Also try and open that file. Okay. Uh, oh, I, I, can, I can still scroll up. Let me read off these names. DT, Numbers, Papa Bell 1, Vagar Tam, Loit Kala Media, Adismart, Svargas 2354, Galen 111, Ladder 1 Anxiety. Just take a deep breath and you'll have less anxiety. Also drink some tea. Seru Lean, 518, Scrote Hihu, uh, come lover six nine, Nathan B one three, Kusor Ryu, Matt three one four five one, Doug Winslow trackpad ninety four, 
Inu, Inuminium A, Van Hoffman, and Test Account, please ignore. Thanks, Tagi, again, for all the subs. So many Tagi emotes. All those subs have received the Tagi, 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 Tagi emotes. Just use it. <laughs> Try to use it in moderation. Also, can I just take a pawn? A pawn that wants to play d5. It could be getting spicy. I'm fantasizing takes d5 and then queen h5. And then I lose a bishop and then I push a pawn. The king moves and then I promote and make another queen. Let's do it. Okay, life is good. Like takes, takes. <clears throat> oh, I'm threatening maiden too. <laughs> I'm threatening maiden too. Opponent's not going to let me do it, but um, bishop f7, king e7, knight f5 is a mate. Could be quite nice. Most expected is d5. Second most expected is takes. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I'm, I'm feeling good. Opponent kind of walked into the line now suffering from lack of development. As yeah, position's opening up. Queen h5's coming. Yeah, I don't think uh, there's a line um, d5 g7. I don't think it's as strong as king f8. Oh, m m m h. That's like a. It's an interjection expressing, uh, expressing satisfaction maybe, or tastiness. Thank you, Mavzer for the, the resub for four months. Yeah, so d5, queen h5 still looking very attractive. Trying to predict what black happy will do. Hey, anti-wiz, happy new year to you too. Thanks again for the sub. And AKD 707. AKD707 tried to cheer in the sub message. Cheer 500. <laughs> I guess you can't you can't cheer and sub at the same time. Um, but good try. Okay, queen h5. Queen h5, I'm thinking king d7. Huh. And the bishop is kind of hanging. But okay, king d7. Uh, that should be great for me. Like just bishop e2. Um, I, I would keep the pin. I want the pawn back too. Okay, let's play queen h5. I realized I only made one cup of tea. I forgot to make the pot. I just put the tea bag in the cup. I made ashwagandha tea. It's like some Indian sort of spice. It's really good. Hey, AKD 707. Trying again. If you try it first and don't succeed, you try again. And then you succeed. Thanks for the bits. Appreciate that. Yeah, this is a massive threat. I mean, black either has to, like, move the king or take. Like, what else to do? Like, all of the, all of the moves don't really look that appealing. Um, but yeah, I was thinking king d7, bishop e2, and then I have the threat of this. There's also king, king d7, queen f5 check. The king could move back. Could also move this way, and then bishop f4 check. And there's bishop d6, takes, takes, and then g7. I lose a queen, and then the queen is reborn. 
Now I lose a bishop, and then the, the bishop could be taken. There's also a line, king d7, queen f5, king c7, bishop f4, king b6. Which looks interesting. And bishop e3, king goes back, queen goes this way. I don't know. All the lines should be pretty good for white. But black did win connect 4. Wow, king d7. It's so funny. Like, this opening, black developed a knight, traded it off, then only pushed pawns, and then the next piece developed is a king. <laughs> king d7. So now the, the question is, do I do I uh, play bishop e2, or do I strike immediately with the check? Because um, both options look quite appealing. I think my queen wants to stay here, just pinning. And the bishop delivering the check should be a bit more troublesome for black. There's also bishop digs d5, which deserves some consideration. Um, it's actually kind of forcing because bishop d6 there's this and then like king c7 looking for the knockout blow yeah let's actually take some time here takes 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 so i guess there's two moves okay king e8 gets mated so there's king c7 or bishop d6 And maybe they just transpose. They probably just transpose to each other, because I would play bishop f4 against both of them. And then black would just play the other move. So we get to that position. And if we trade, I don't really get much. I could castle queenside with check. I could play... Um, so, so let's say this. Okay, we go down this line. King c7, check. Bishop d6 and then g7. So now. So his bishop takes f4. But not likely. Let's say rook e8 there. Oh, and then my queen supports the queening square. So the queens could then talk to each other. If I'm going to sack on d5, I want to be extra certain that it works. There's also a line... I, I forgot I have a resource in knight f5 in, in some of these variations. One more time. Takes, takes, takes. Uh, king c7, bishop f4. King b6 doesn't work because I win the queen. So bishop d6. And then the thought is g7 right away. I think one issue is it takes. Yeah, there's a lot of arrows. One issue is takes, because then I, I make a queen, I win the rook, but then I lose a piece, and I would have won a rook for two pieces, and my queen's kind of out of play. The reborn queen is out of play. So takes, 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 king c7, bishop f4, bishop d6 g7, and bishop takes f4, and key position. I have queen c7. Queen c7, rook still attacked. Black probably blocks on d7. And then I take, hmm. I really want to make this work, but I'm not seeing a great solution. Okay, now I have an idea. Oh, idea doesn't work. It's close to working. My idea was takes, takes, takes. King c7, bishop here. Bishop d6, rook d1. Um, adding more pressure, threatening this. Oh, maybe it does work. So bishop takes f4, I have this move. I win the queen. Sacking a lot of material, but then I should... So I have queen f7. 
Or no, I would play queen c4. Okay. One more time. <laughs> I'm going through this so many times. So I sack on d5. Um, if bishop d6, I think it just gets smashed by knight, knight f5. Actually, maybe not. Maybe maybe this first. So it would just transpose. So takes, takes, takes. Uh, bishop d6. Bishop f4. King c7. And then rook d1. So then there's so much pressure on the bishop. Bishop would take. And then queen c4 check, unleashing the queen. And the beautiful thing is that after knight c6, I take the queen. Either king or rook takes, and then I play g7, and I'm just queening the next move. And I win back any material. I mean, I've already won the queen, and I'm winning back even more material. So I think it all works. I'm just going to do one more check. Um, I guess in this position, like, does black have any other options? Because queen e7, knight f5 is very strong. And then same thing with queen. I mean, queen c7, even rook d1 ideas. Okay, let's go for this. And I'm just checking h takes g6 as well, but then I just take stuff. Okay. Okay, a lot of arrows. I draw arrows so people can hopefully try and follow. I know there's there's a lot of viewers who are just beginning the game and need help with notation or visualizing. I'm not sure if the arrows are actually a help for me or if they're just added distraction, but uh, at this point it's kind of the habit of drawing them for the viewers. If he doesn't take on d5, then I, just, I want a, a very key center pawn. Files open. And black still has nothing developed, except the king is kind of developed. And this pawn's now weak. Most importantly, I got rid of black's connect four. <laughs> I forgot this was this was kind of connect four. Yeah, there's different elements to calculating. Like one one element is visualizing, like being able to see see ahead and see kind of things clearly. Another element is like identifying the right moves. And I think in, in this sort of sequence, in this kind of calculation especially, it was being aware of like all the resources and kind of seeing the big picture. Because in many of these lines, I have to use kind of different areas of the board um, like this g7 resource, bishop f4 resource, rook d1. A lot of things have to play a role. And a lot of it is like, is identifying the forcing sequences and, and finding initiative. And if you can throw punch after punch after punch, um, then it can, it can sometimes lead to good things if you calculate precisely. Chat is saying that you are getting one lucky sub trip to Thailand. <laughs> Wait, what? Cause you are getting so much bits and you want to give it back to us. Who in the chat is saying that? Or are you saying that? Uh, I would have to think about that. Trip to Thailand. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds interesting. <laughs> Wait, okay. Uh, Bishop d6. So Bishop f4. I'm kind of just trusting everything I had calculated moments ago. Expecting king c7. King e7 walks into maiden 1. That could be nice. Maybe I should I, I should cover Tagi's trip to Thailand <laughs> with all the bits that he's been giving me. Oh, Thailand is a nice place. Actually, was it exactly? It was almost exactly one year ago I was in Thailand. I spent New Year's last year in Indonesia and then flew to Thailand, I think January 5th or 6th. 
Went to Chiang Mai. Weed school. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, last year I was still living like a, a digital nomad lifestyle. I was just, I spent, what, like four and a half months out of the country. Photo chess! Long time no see, photo chess. Thanks for subbing. Or thanks for rating. SO, photo chess. People should follow photo chess. Not only on Twitch, but on, on Instagram, on all the platforms. Takes amazing photos. I was seeing Photo Chess's live feed of the, the World Rapid and Blitz. It was really cool. It was like, a, um, looked like a video game. Uh, okay, King C7. So we're continuing the calculation. If you're just joining, I spent a long time in this position drawing many, many arrows. And this was kind of the main position that I had predicted. And the thought is to play rook to d1. It's important not to castle queenside because that allows takes with check. Um, but with rook d1, I just apply pressure, um, threaten the bishop, and after this, queen c4, knight c6, rook takes, and then rook takes, and then this move. Oh, but now I'm realizing I'm realizing the bishop can just develop, and the rooks are connected, and I can't queen. And material-wise, oh wow. No, oh, maybe I miscalculated. I forgot the, the rooks will be connected. Okay, <laughs> I have to calculate again. Uh, rook d1 takes queen c4. I mean, I can win the queen. I win the queen, allow this. That's so so close to promoting the pawn. Maybe I can just take here with knight g6 ideas. And I feel like I, I was calculating g7 first. But rejected it because of this move. I think that's still. Yeah, I guess that's still holding up for black. It was actually a kind of funny idea just to take the bishop and then play g7 and then lose my queen, queen reborn, and then I'm up. I would be up the exchange. That actually might be the simplest line. Because other line looks a little bit murky. Rook d1 takes. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wow. Okay, I've, I have a huge blind spot. Huge blind spot. Rook d1 takes. I, I had considered this initially, but I, I didn't even say it because um, I thought it didn't work. But I can take the queen. After takes, takes. I was so fixated on g7 and just rejected this whole line because bishop e6, but I, I forgot I could just take on h7, and black has no good way to defend against h8. Okay, rook d1. Yeah, that's so simple. Yeah, rook d1, it's like, it's just winning. Okay. I wasn't looking at the chat, so I'm, I'm curious if maybe if some people spotted that. I was so fixated on making g7 work and then making queen c4 work, I forgot to kind of circle back and consider this move. So in, in some sense, the bishop is still pinned to the queen. Now the bishop's attacked three times. Yeah, this is, this is completely over. <laughs> Don't flag. I have so much time, man. I'm used to playing like all this bullets and berserking. It's so nice to like calculate. When is Bangkok open? Bangkok open. Bangkok open is like the biggest tournament in Thailand. Um, but it, so Bangkok open is in April, and it overlaps with Reykjavik open. So I have to choose one to play in. 
both turnants are on my bucket list. Okay, so let's just actually let's just calculate takes takes takes. No great checks. No tricky tactics. Okay. Oh, I completely forgot. Oh no, I forgot that black doesn't have to take my rook. Oh no, I got so excited. Black's not gonna take my rook. Black's just gonna take my pawn, my future beloved queen. Ah, it's still a fight. And it's a weird material imbalance, too. <laughs> oh, another blind spot. I, I just, I, I got so emotional about seeing such beauty. Oh, that's unfortunate. Wow. Mm. <laughs> what? Fat Thai? Oh, Pod Thai. Oh, the Pad Thai is so good in Thailand. Okay, I can't get distracted by fantasies of Pad Thai and tea or beer. I have to focus and not miscalculate more. I'm, I'm curious if I should even like take and take a lot of pawns. I mean, material situation... I could also play this move. Wait, there, there's a there's a bunch of moves to play to attack pawns. There's this move, there's this move, and there's this move. And all the pawns will be attacked. The problem is g5 in some cases. But I'm thinking... Okay, I think this is a standout move, rook d4. Because if g5, then I take. And g pawn tied down to bishop. Knight will someday return. I always have rook c4 check if needed. Yeah, I think this is the way to go. I don't think black is saving uh, the pawn. So I'll have... I'll basically have a rook and two pawns for two bishops? I'm not sure. I'm not sure who's better here. Oh, it's so frustrating to, to think that I was completely winning. I played this so quickly too, I should have paused. Okay, but let's not. Let's not be regretful about the past. Okay, takes. I'm just being extra careful. I'm not missing anything. I think this is okay. Yeah, this game will definitely uh, deserve analysis afterwards. Because I am curious if there is some clear-cut win that wasn't just a complete hallucination. Yeah, so Black's going to develop knight c6, I guess, expected. Um, I'd like to play this move. The problem is bishop c1, and then my pawn and knight are attacked. I could castle, maybe. And casting is kind of interesting. Number two hundred eighty-six. Kapow, kapow. Kapow, kapow. Oh, that's my that's my seeding. Also, my time is running low. Maybe the XI Sparks was having a point <laughs> using the dome flag emoji. But okay, casting kingside. It's so late, and it's like almost. It's pretty much the end game. But let's castle. Hello, YouTube people. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Yeah, you two people. Listen to Sam. Sam knows what's up. Uh, 
this is going to be an interesting game for YouTube, whatever happens. Um, bishop d7. Okay, bishop d7, knight g6. The problem is bishop f5. Yeah, that's not good. And I want to remove this bishop. I really want to make knight g6 work. I mean, knight g6, it just seems like I'm losing a material there. And I could sack the exchange, be down a piece. Nah. Is rook h8 a threat? Kind of. But then, like, g3 stuff. I'm thinking rook, like, rook e2? Even g3 here. Could be interesting. G3. Here's some bishop h3 move. I kind of like g3 though. The bishop's actually quite awkward. F6 is weak. Like F5, I just move the rook somewhere. Let's play g3. I know it looks kind of weakening because light squares, but I mean, there's one, one attacking move I'll defend. It's also a weird situation, like it's kind of a love trapezoid. Trapezoid? Diamond? It's not a triangle. What do we call this shape? Some kind of diamond type thing. I'm not sure if it's love or hate or too many deep words. I did say G3, great line. Oh, did Tagi? Maybe Tagi predicted the future. It's a yin and yang. I, I like that. The yin yang of pawns and minor pieces. But okay, one of the main points is, okay, bishop e5 looks solid, but then knight g6. And then I control f5, so there's no bishop f5, and the, the bishop pawn duo should be destroyed. Also, shark... Shark Oracle, thanks for subbing. And okay, it is possible for Black to like sack the bishop for the pawn, but that's that's a yin, and then this would be the yang, and, and it's just a trade. I think I'd be happy for that, like the rook, rook and two pawns versus knight and bishop with f6 being weak. Could try and play for a win. Pretty soon I'm going to have to live on the increment. But okay, 10 second increment is a lot more than I'm used to. Do we have 666 viewers? That's not a good sign. But let's not believe in unlucky numbers. Okay, what to do? F5. I guess the problem... I can't move the rook anywhere because bishop e or anywhere along the fourth rank, because bishop e3 and then takes. So I have to move the rook along the e-file. There's really only two moves to consider. I think rook e2 makes most sense. Rook e2, takes, takes. Yeah, rook e2. have to be aware of, like, the alignment. But at least for now, there's no bishop e5. And I'm threatening... I just want to, like, trade bishop for knight. If bishop moves, I win the f-pawn. I guess the knight... I think there's this move. 95. I don't think that works, though, because then I just take and I attack the knight. Confusing position. Like, I don't know what side I would prefer. It's like if black can hold on to the bishop pair, then it could be very troublesome. Oh, Tagi using another new emote. I'll explain that emote later. Remind me. 
that emote will be relevant within a few days. Thank you, Drainer. <laughs> Drainer 3x3. I'll have to pass them on to Tagi in the form of Pad Thai. Okay, upon getting low on time, um, I'm trying to. Okay, I guess I don't need to predict. Let's take. I can also take here. Hmm. Oh, this is decision moment. So the problem is if I take here, takes, takes, and F file opens, this pawn super solid. If I take here, bishop has to, mo <coughs> has to move. I guess bishop returns to F4. That's not so pleasant. Actually, if takes, 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 I do have outside passer. And then rook F4 coming. It's rook G8, king H2. There's rook g4. Actually, rook g8, rook g2. Okay, let's do this. There is kind of a, I guess, a theme in endgames where it's rook for two minor pieces. And the th theme, at least in this position, is the, the concept of the outside passer. So minor pieces sometimes have difficulty defending against outside pass pawn. And the, the deeper we head into the endgame, the, the more powerful the rook can become. Especially with, with a pass pawn on the board. Usually, like earlier in the game, minor pieces are preferable because they can organize some attack. Frozen Rosen emote in Rosen win. Ah, no, it's, it's not a Frozen Rosen emote. Except I should probably make... Oh, that would be interesting emote to make. I'll do a photo shoot next time there's a blizzard, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll convert whatever photo of me frozen into a, a frozen Rosen emote. Okay, let's stay focused. Ah, okay, rook f4 I think is, is just a great square for a rook. Like blockade the pawn, defend a pawn, constantly pressure this pawn. The knight's restricted by my pawn, by my rook, by my other rook. Basically controlling all the squares and like can move towards any sort of action. The light could move here. But also the, the bishop's restricted, like everything's kind of restricted for black. Um, black kind of waiting. So that move is reasonable. Have to play quickly. It's huge storm here tomorrow, mm. maybe you can still make it in time. Yeah, I, I guess I could go to Iceland, but... Wait, okay, focus time. So 97, actually a very clear idea. That was, a, that was a good move by the opponent. I'm thinking c4. I'm gonna play c4. I do give the knight a square, but the idea... Oh, bishop, bishop c6 to e4 could be very unpleasant. I might have to allow it. Yeah, let's allow it. The idea with c4 is to prevent knight d5. Now I'm preventing knight g6, which was an annoying threat. Expecting this and this. My plan is to put the rook on g5 and then get the h-pawn moving. Bishop's going to find a very happy home. I'll have to play this move. Yeah, opponent played well to kind of at least improve the bishop. Now the knight's kind of improving. I could play b4. So I, I do have a 4 on 2 advantage. Some idea of c5. Maybe king. Where should the king move? King h2 maybe? Like to g3? Flag. 
I know. I know. It, it was complicated. I was trying to calculate this line. Lines is like very weird. Actually, the line kind of keeps going too. As 95 takes, 93 here, uh, pawn takes and then takes. I hit the knight, knight's restricted. Here's knight f2 and then king e3. Knight h3. Yeah, good move. Oh, maybe I have to go for that. Let's go for it. Nah, not what I wanted, but it's still interesting. Oh, I forgot B2's hanging. Any alternative? I have to go for this. Mm. Oh dear. I think they're here to see, ooh, see a fork maybe. Oh, we could just simplify into a draw. I don't really want to draw, but I kind of have to, right? Yeah, I have to. I'm down at night to do. This, this game's going to be a draw. Unless some really weird thing happens. I mean, maybe I'll... I, I have... There is a game in the the Winter Marathon. I won some endgame. Like, even worse than this. I was, like, down upon. Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll test my opponent in, like, basic rook endgame. And <laughs> the game will just continue longer. I'll see if my opponent offers me a draw first, and then perhaps decide. There's a slight imbalance, like this pawn structure. I'll walk the king to, to b3. I'll try and advance and do stuff with the rook. Goodbye, YouTube. No. Goodbye, YouTube. <laughs> no, the, game, the game's continuing. The, the, end, the rook endgame is just beginning, actually. I'm already like considering this and maybe black will self mate somehow. Well, okay, let's start with king b3. The one thing I'll say, like these types of endgames, they look really simple. <laughs> so many people. If you're here for the toggy bits, make yourself known in the chat. If you're here for the chess, you can also make yourself known. Let's play um, Let's play this move. B4 might be coming, but B4 not really an issue. Yeah, I was going to say, like, sometimes people go wrong in these endgames because they, they assume it's very simple and then sometimes unusual ideas can pop up. You never want to... Uh, just relax, thinking the, the game's going to play itself. And my opponent tr clearly trying to do something. Maybe trying to play against my time. <laughs> Wait, B4? Wait, B4? Wait, Rosen can I take? This is still a draw, but... Yeah, let's take. It's still a draw, like, black actually has a very clear way of uh, simplifying. But this was kind of risky way to play for black. I'm wondering if I had... I probably didn't have anything better. But... It's funny, actually, like... We're about to get to a situation where either of us could lose if we make the wrong move. But yeah, I'm, I'm playing it out. I'm not going to accept early draw. Like, I'm up a pawn. I used to be down a knight. Yeah, so this is an issue. Um, so if I play king c4, I lose. Or do I? I lose, yeah. So I have to take the pawn. 
Now it looks like I'm almost losing to this move, but thankfully I have c4. And yeah, do you still want me to play it out? I can play it out. To prove my dominance with extra pawn. Or I could offer a draw, be civilized. opponent thinking or I, I could like if i really wanted to i could flag and it would still be a draw i'm just imagining like people in the youtube comments being uh being so frustrated with all these these bits but maybe sometimes people in the youtube comments don't understand what what bits are um, I, I do appreciate like the the, the supports, the, the bits do support the uh, my my quest for chess education. Anyway, let's um let's analyze. <laughs> Maybe soon to be right, soon to be, also used to be, but uh, have to wait a few more years for that. Um, yeah, so opening-wise, uh, we can see Stockfish isn't impressed, but the, the valuation doesn't reflect how difficult this position is to play for black. And then, yeah, e4, I think, is the first mistake from opponent. Shiri does shaf. Thanks for subbing. Um, yeah, I think, like, already here, I mean, we, we can check with Stockfish. I think it's already quite good for white. Yeah, so probably best move is queen e7 or c6. Yeah, black has to like really play accurately and hunker down. Um, okay, so position was really good. And I'm thinking that, okay, bishop takes d5, probably best move. Wow. Oh, so rook d1. So I had considered taking and then playing g7 and then convince myself that rook d1 was better uh so is it just taking and g7 yeah i could queen here he white's just up material um but then again like i i played based on this just oversight i thought like, I thought my pawn would be captured. And I forgot the material situation that, um, like, I'm, I'm not up anything. But I thought, like, winning the rook, I'd be up something, but I had already sacked the bishop on d5. Um, I sacked my bishop on f4 as well. So, yeah, that's life. Casting would have been bad, because then black takes with check. Um, which I did not want to do. Um, and then, yeah, so we can kind of see Stockfish. Maybe slightly prefer black. Um, maybe it could have been worse for me. Yeah, the end game. Yeah, I think I just got outplayed in the end game. This whole idea of preparing this and then this and then this uh, was quite strong. I got really low on time. I think I, I was very close to flagging. Um, and then I thought I was just like close to losing here. But thankfully, like I have this move. Um, so it's a bit tricky for black. King d6 is a better way to play for win is black. Uh, Mana saying, could you play g7 on move 15? Really? I would probably believe that. Just uh, the value of his brand. Um, move 15, g7. I'm trying to remember if I considered this. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think I even considered g7 here. Um, though maybe I did. G7. Uh, 
I think the issue was after takes. I think I've, I've looked at this briefly. And it's another situation. Black has two miners for a rook. And I thought the queen was kind of out of play. Knight's out of play. Um, maybe I didn't look further enough. Because there is queen d8 coming with this kind of skewer idea. Yeah, this looks playable. This could just be winning. I mean, black survives queen here. Check king c6. <laughs> Would probably just be a mess. We can see what Stockfish says. G7. Oh, Stockfish prefers my, my original intention, queen c4. And then take, and then, oh, then take here. Ooh. Yeah, here, here, here. Takes, takes. So the first thing I thought, g7, okay, white's better in all these lines, but taking here, preparing this is quite nice. And there's no bishop f5. Or bishop e6, yeah. That pawn so powerful. But g7 right away. Wow, queen g8, that's a weird move. That's so weird. Okay, white's maybe better somehow. That's so funny, Stockfish just accepts queen on h8, defending this. Like, all these squares are defended. And black's ready to develop. Anyway, interesting game. I hope people learned something from that game. Uh, mistakes were made. That was some interesting opening. I think the opening was a huge success. My calculation could have used some improvements. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll put that on YouTube. It was interesting. Reverse Stafford Gambit. Some plot twists. Some toggy bits. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed that. YouTube people, um, hope you followed Sam's instructions. And I'll see you in the future.